Welcome. Today it's all about comfort food. We're off to an upscale diner serving classic American dishes. In the 1970s, the movie American Graffiti premiered, and the series Happy Days debuted soon after. This sparked a retro flashback craze in the resurgence and popularity of the 1950s period diners. Our destination today embodies the next stage of diner evolution, an upscale version of those retro diners that were all the craze in the 70s. They refer to themselves as twisted farm food, but one look at their offerings and you'll think you're looking at the contents of a gourmet magazine. Maybe a better term would be an elevated farmhouse style gastropub. Hash House Agogo has long been a favorite of Las Vegas locals, and it's easy to see why. Such iconic dishes such as chicken and waffles are served in enormous portions and beautifully plated. Brunch is served from opening to closing every day. Today, we're taking you on a tour and giving you our honest opinion. We started with a few drinks. The lemonade, probably one of the best I've had in a while in a restaurant. Fresh squeezed lemon, sugar, and water. Nothing more added just the way it should be. You can order it many different ways here with other flavored syrups, but I liked it straight up with just a lemon. The Deep Eddy Sunrise comes in a Hash House of Go-Go glass and you get to keep it as a souvenir. It has vodka, orange juice, and grenadine. So it was like a tequila sunrise, but with vodka. They have a huge variety of drinks to choose from. The orange juice tastes fresh squeezed and the grenadine adds a nice sweetness. It could have been a bit stronger, but it definitely hit the spot. Garnished with a lime and cherry on top, all in all, quite a refreshing beverage. I enjoyed it. Look at this. Talk about picture-perfect waffles. This is probably one of the most famous dishes and for which they're best known. Crispy on the outside and light on the inside, not at all greasy. Infused with huge pieces of bacon and beautifully layered. Then topped with sage, fried chicken breasts, and lovingly adorned with fried leeks. Finally, a monstrous sharp steak knife barbarically stabbed into the top to keep them from keeling over. I love the fried leeks also. They give it a surprise texture and bite that chicken and waffles don't usually have. It's probably my favorite part of this dish. I also love the bacon in the waffles. It keeps its integrity and remains crunchy in the batter. You can tell they use really good quality bacon. The sage in the chicken coating adds a nice flavor, but the chicken itself was a little under seasoned I felt. It lacked salt, but tasted good eaten with the waffles. I was known in my restaurant for making amazing fried chicken that was always tender, flavorful, and juicy. It was due to brining it overnight. I think brining would have brought this dish to another level. The chicken on its own is good, but not the best fried chicken I've tasted, nor is it life altering. Would I get this dish again? Absolutely. I don't mean to sound so cynical. It was really great and the flavors worked in harmony with each other very well. And what a visually stunning presentation. It's like a Dexter episode where the victim this week is Carmen Miranda. On camera, it may be hard to tell the serving size, so $24 may seem like a lot, but in reality, they are huge shareable portions. I can see this dish easily feeding too. The French toast is also a delightful treat packed with flavor. If you're a cinnamon addict as I am, you're gonna love it. The milk bread, as they call it, or milk toast, is thick and crunchy on the outside and moist on the inside. It's not too eggy or dry, just perfectly dredged in a little egg then fried to a buttery crispness. Texture is really as important as flavor to me when it comes to French toast, and this is really well prepared. Just enough egg batter to make it the consistency of custard without being overpowering or soggy. The addition of banana that's charred black, seared on the griddle into an almost caramel-like pudding, brings this dish to another level, and the pecans are a decadent topping that's pleasing to the palate. Lots of butter and maple syrup make this some of the best French toast you've ever put in your mouth. My only criticism is that the whipped butter didn't really melt on the French toast. Melted butter would have been better, or room temperature butter, but not cold. We ordered the meatloaf dinner, a.k.a. Andy's mother's meatloaf dinner, as they call it. But the server misinformed us as Andy's mother never works lunch and only comes in for dinner. Instead, we received the meatloaf hash. I can tell that the meatloaf would have been great, but I'm not a fan of it as a hash. As you can see, it's cut up into little pieces and covered in cheese, spinach, and red peppers. 
All of it goes to just mask the flavor. I was expecting a whole piece of meatloaf over mashed potatoes. This is more of a breakfast dish in my opinion, and I have to say I don't care for meatloaf in a hash. After brushing away the flavor distractors, I was able to try the meatloaf on its own, and it was totally delicious. It's light and tastes more like a turkey meatloaf than beef. The biscuit is amazing. I loved it. They're freshly baked and just the perfect texture. This blueberry jam is also great. The crispy fried potatoes, very good, had obviously started out crunchy, but I would have preferred them on the side and not under the hash. The hash rendered them soggy and kind of ruined the texture. I did love the ones that had escaped being smothered by the hash. If you think you would like this dish, then I suggest ordering it with the potatoes on the side. I'm sure it would be quite a bit more enjoyable that way. Chilaquillas are a famous Mexican dish that's usually served at breakfast or brunch, but really it's great anytime. This dish was invented originally to reuse leftover tortillas. Fresh or soft tortillas are sauteed in either a red or green sauce, then mixed with eggs and cheese and topped usually with cilantro or avocado, or both. The chilaquillas are sensational here. We ordered them with salsa verde. They're a big, bad, bodacious mess. Avocado, cilantro, chopped tomato, but only a few shredded pieces of chicken. Great flavor and lots of Mexican soft cheese. I would have loved to have dived right in and eaten just these. We could and would have lost ourselves in them if we weren't making a video and trying to show so many other dishes. They were nice and spicy too. A word of warning, eat them as soon as they get set onto your table because they immediately start to get soggy and soggy chilaquillas are not pleasant. Also, I would suggest you ask for more of that wonderful green salsa since once you dig down a layer or two, the chips are devoid of sauce and you want the green salsa to spruce things up. The corned beef hash was terrific. It was very fresh tasting and very well seasoned. Nice and garlicky and had been perfectly brined and lovingly roasted. Covered in lots of cheese and served with scrambled eggs, crispy potatoes, and another amazing biscuit. I enjoyed the roasted potatoes and they remained crispy even under the corned beef. The eggs were the one thing that could have been improved on. We asked for them over easy, but they came out scrambled. They were very dry and overcooked to the point they were hard to swallow. I would have preferred for them to be fried or cooked quite a bit less than they were. And now the surprise of the day. The Caesar salad is magnificent and I highly recommend it. A classic Caesar as you find in a fine restaurant, mixed table side but they make it in the kitchen here and it comes out to your table already mixed. With the proper combination of garlic, anchovy, lemon, mustard, Tabasco, Worcestershire sauce, and olive oil. The flavors are reminiscent of Caesars in Tijuana. I grew up near the international border and went to Tijuana many times. In fact, Caesars Grill was the first place I ever tasted the Caesar salad when I was just a kid. I fell in love with it then and there and it's always been my favorite salad. We had the small Caesar, but when I returned to Hash House at Go-Go, I'm going to order the big ol' Caesar and make sure they put on the polenta croutons and parmesan crisps since ours came without them. I now love polenta croutons. I was introduced to them at Buddy V's. They have great ones. And if you love a good Caesar salad, check out our Buddy V's video. The fish and chips were also a very pleasant surprise. I didn't expect them to be so good. The batter is not a thick, traditional English beer batter, but rather a lighter, crispier version of an Americanized fish and chips coating. This diner style fish and chips was so fresh you can taste the ocean in it. The fish is not overcooked, but lovingly fried to perfection and expertly seasoned with just enough salt to make it delicious on its own. The tartar sauce was outstanding, one of the best I've ever tasted. I love the fries, they were nothing short of spectacular. Crispy on the outside, not greasy and very seasoned with some sort of coating that gave them an extra crunchy exterior. As you probably know by now, I have a chili addiction, so I always mix a little hot sauce with my ketchup. I'm not a huge fan of coleslaw, but this coleslaw is in a league of its own. I devoured it, which I never do. It was truly wonderful. Hash House of Go-Go is clearly a cut above the typical diner, both in taste and aesthetics. They say we eat with our eyes, well, given the dazzling presentation techniques employed at Hash House Go Go, it's not hard to see how they become so popular. One look at their food, and you're just drawn to come in. They're a unique and great place to visit for elevated, farm fresh diner food. 
if you're visiting Vegas or for us locals. After all, there are five locations in Vegas alone, so there's no excuse for not giving them a try. They also have three other locations, one in Connecticut near the Mohegan Sun, and two in Florida. I don't know what took us so long to try it, but we'll definitely be back soon. I can't wait to explore more of the menu. I'm sure you can't go wrong with almost anything here. I hope you give Hash House a go-go a try. Who knows, maybe you'll see us there. Make sure you tell them, Let's Eat Vegas sent you. I know we're all guilty of watching videos on YouTube and not subscribing. As a reminder, it's free to subscribe and it really helps us bring you more videos. So please like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit the notifications bell. It means a lot to us. Until we eat again, bon appetit.